Hi, thanks for joining me today. My name is Anna and today's class is going to be a short tune-up for our hips. So let's come down onto our backs and get started. So setting up here for a bridge with your feet on the floor and feel your lower back ribs move down toward the floor so we're holding these front ribs in. Lengthen your tailbone towards your heels using your glutes to drive up just for a low bridge. And you can do a little check for the glutes by reaching back, giving them a little tap. You can also have your palms on the front pelvic points as that little reminder of the glutes to lift up, not the lower back too. And then maybe keep your hands on your pelvis as we start to pulse in the glutes. So lower a little and lift, lower and lift. Okay. And just notice here that the pelvis is staying level, so we're minimizing any side to side rocking or dropping of the pelvis. You can start to check in with your breath and feeling that inhale move into your ribs. And then exhaling, just feeling that drawing back in. Now we'll stop that pulsing. Bring your hands onto your outer hips, your outer thighs, and begin to flap your knees out and in. So it's really a controlled motion here, but we're just starting to wake up these muscles of abduction. So that is moving the legs away from the body. You should start to feel some good work in these outer hips. Couple more here. Nice. And then come back to your regular bridge. Take your hands onto your thighs with your arms straight. And now we're going to lower super slowly, one vertebra at a time, letting your sacrum be the last to land. Nice. So let's roll over onto your left side. You can either have a block or a pillow underneath your head or make a little pillow with your left arm. Stack your right knee on top of your left. You can bring your knees a little bit closer to you, possibly. Now lift your right leg up just to about hip height. So knee and hip are in one line here. And we're gonna bring the knee in toward your chest in flexion and then reach it back in extension. So let's go back and forth between the two. And imagine that you are sliding your knee along a low table or a coffee table or something like that so that we are keeping that line from hip to knee all the way through. So that we're really focusing on isolating this movement in the hip and not moving, say, in the ribs, the low back, or the pelvis. So we're holding those front ribs in. And you might find that that feels a little trickier, especially when you're going back into extension. Because if we're lacking the movement in the hip to do that, sometimes it'll go into the low back and we'll thrust the ribs, arch the back. So we're trying to keep all of that quiet so we can isolate that in the hip joint. You can keep that right foot flexed, push down into the lower left leg, last couple. Right. Stack your right knee on top of your left and we'll roll to the right side. So left knee on top of right, the knees can pull in a little bit and then lift that left leg up just to about hip height. See this line between your knee and your hip. We're going to keep that as we move into flexion, pulling it in towards you and back into extension, moving it away. Checking in with the ribs. They're staying held in. We're just really feeling this action 
in the hip joint. And if this feels like a little bit clunky right off the bat, that's okay. These are sometimes movements that we are not getting ourselves into throughout the day. And so this might just be something to notice of if you're lacking movement in any one particular area, just that that may be something to come back to more often. Keep flexing that left foot, keeping a straight line all the way through flexion and extension, pushing down a little bit into that lower right leg just to help you stabilize. Last couple. And then we'll lower left knee on top of right. Let's come around into a quadruped or tabletop position. So hands are right underneath your shoulders. Knees are right underneath your hips. And then feel that your pelvis is level here. So we're not letting the pelvis tip forward but we're holding these two front pelvic points drawn up and towards each other and keeping the back of the sacrum, or the back of the pelvis and the sacrum level here. Now bring your left knee up. So the knee is bent, the left foot reaches up towards the ceiling. And now notice here that we're not letting the pelvis drop. So buckle these two front pelvic points together and feel that left glute working a lot here. You can reach back and give it a little poke. So it's as if you're going to step your left foot on the ceiling and feel that work in the glute without changing the pelvis. Lower your left knee back underneath you. Bring your right leg out in abduction. So just a little bit here. Lower the right knee, lift the left leg up in extension. Lower it, right leg in abduction. Got a nice little pop there. Left leg up in extension. Watch that the ribs are not coming down toward the floor. Lower the left knee, right leg out in abduction. Two more. Left leg is up, working that left glute. Lower it down, right leg out to the side a little bit. Left leg up. Lower it down, right leg out, hold it here without wagging that left hip out to the side. Hold that left outer hip in. Now kick your right leg straight out to the side and straighten the leg with the toes coming forward. So keeping the space in your left hip crease, we're gonna hinge back just to however much feels good for you and come back forward. Hinge back. Come forward. Keep going with these adductor racks here. Just working to open up some space in that right inner thigh. Keeping the spine long, the head in line so we're not jutting the chin forward, but keeping the length in the back of your neck. Nice. Now hold it here, not shifted back, but left knee under the hip. Push down into your left hand and float this right arm up, open for a nice little twist. Holding that left shoulder blade on your back ribs. You can let your head release here. Take a couple more deep breaths into this whole right side body. Awesome. Right hand comes down and right knee will land underneath you. All right, second side here. I'm gonna bring this right leg up with the knee bent and hip extension. Notice here, pelvis is level. Those two front pelvic points are buckling together. It's, a, it's as if you're gonna stamp your right foot on the ceiling, lower the right knee down, left hip comes out to the side a little bit in hip abduction. Lower it down, right leg up, in extension. Step that foot right up towards the ceiling. Lower it down. Left leg out in abduction. Lower down. 
right foot up. Feel that right glute working. Lower it down, left leg out. Two more here. Step that right foot up from the glute without letting the ribs drop toward the floor. Lower the knee, left leg out just a little bit. Last one here. Now hold this left leg out. Firm this right outer hip in. So a lot of work on both legs here. And then stretch the left leg straight out foot on the floor with the toes pointing forward. Now maintain this space in your right hip crease as we just hinge back to this little adductor rock. And so what I mean by holding that space in the right hip crease is that as we go back, we're not letting the pelvis tip forward onto the thigh, but we're maintaining that levelness in the pelvis and just move back. Keeping the length in the spine, head is in line. Last one. So come up so that right hip is directly over the knee. Push down into the right hand and open up for a little twist. Left arm reaches up. Holding this right shoulder blade on your back ribs. You can release your head and breathe into that whole left side. We'll bring that left hand and left knee down and let's come up for a little kneel stand. If you're feeling it in your wrist, you can always give your wrist a little bit of a circle here. Maybe a little wrist stretch. And then when you're ready in your kneel stand, check in with your pelvis here. So notice if you're tilted forward here, we want the tailbone lengthening down and this pubic bone zipping up. So we've got the pubic bone and the lower front ribs drawing towards each other lightly without rounding in your back. Now we're going to keep that feeling. So we have this space in the hip creases as we hinge back and then drive your glutes forward to bring you back up. So you should feel a lot of activity uh, in the glutes when you lift back up. So hinge back. Come up, drive those glutes forward. Let's do three more. Exactly. So when we're hinging back, this is called hip flexion. And when we come forward, we're coming into that hip extension. Last one. Nice. Now hold it here. Feel the glutes working. Feel the pubic bone zipping up. Now plant your hands down on blocks or the floor. Tuck your toes from those hip creases, pike up. So really lift up into the peak of your pelvis, holding the ribs in. Left leg lifts up just to about hip height. Bend your knee and let's start to circle in the hip. Feel that as you circle in this left hip, you're lifting the right hip crease up as well. So we're not moving the pelvis and circle the other way. So we're not moving the pelvis, but we're moving within this ball and socket joint of the hip. Good. Step your left foot down, lift your right leg up just to hip height, bend the knee and start to circle the hip. And same thing as you circle, feel that you're lifting that left hip crease straight up and switch directions. So we're stabilizing with that left hip, mobilizing with the right. Beautiful. Step your right foot down next to the left. Now lower your knees and we're just going to do like a little side sit here and coming into a 90-90. So your left Knee will be at about a 90 degree angle here with that hip and external rotation, right hip, uh, 90 degree angle in the knee, and that hip is an internal rotation. So you can stay upright here if this feels okay. 
You could also have a blanket or a block underneath your hips. Or you can bring your fingers behind you and that is going to take you out of the hips a little bit so it's not gonna feel quite as intense. And we're just gonna move side to side here. So now the right hip is an external rotation, left hip is an internal rotation. And switching back and forth. So trying to keep some length in your spine so that we can really focus on moving within that hip joint. And then if you are upright here, you can even have your arms out in front of you. And same thing there, we're trying to lift up out of the pelvis, keeping the length in the spine. And that you're just gonna feel a little bit more isolated. It's a little bit more challenging for the hips. All right, and then we're just gonna come around to a seat. And so that can be whatever is most comfortable for you. You could be seated on the floor or have your hips up on something. And just take a moment here, to soften or close your eyes. And notice the difference you feel, even from just spending a little bit of focus, time, and attention on your hips. And just as you head back into whatever the rest of the day holds for you, just notice any differences in how you feel and how you move. And let this be a practice that you revisit whenever you need it. To feel more spry, more joyful, and more free, not only in your hips and your pelvis, but in the rest of your body and in your spirit. If your eyes were closed, go ahead and blink them open. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope your hips are feeling amazing. If you enjoyed this class, it helps me a ton. If you would like and subscribe and share with anyone who you think might enjoy it as well. So thanks for being here and I look forward to seeing you again next time.